Welcome. This lesson is the second in a two-part series on the experimental te technique of calorimetry. Where the last lesson focused on hot thing added to cold thing, this lesson will be more fun because it deals with actual reactions. Reactions often release or absorb heat, which causes a temperature change. We'll use that temperature change to calculate the enthalpy of the reaction. Let's return to this flow chart from the last lesson. To determine which kind of calorimetry problem we're tackling, we ask the question, is a reaction involved? Last time, we saw that when no reaction is involved, we're dealing with a thermal equilibration problem. If there is a reaction involved, then we're dealing with a different kind of problem. In this case, the heat comes from a chemical reaction and flows into the surroundings. Now, it's harder to define the system because it's a bit metaphysical. The system is the actual reaction itself. Imagine the reactants are just full of potential energy that they release as they react. The surroundings are what absorbs the energy, which includes the products and whatever container it's in. Water is great at absorbing heat. The surroundings are often a water solution. In our next practice problem, we'll calculate the reaction enthalpy when concentrated acid is added to water. This will cause the water to heat up as the acid dissolves. And just like in a thermal equilibration problem, we'll have to define the system and the surroundings. However, it's much less obvious who is who. The system is the reaction. Imagine the concentrated acid is just full of potential energy, full of money in the bank, which it wants to release when it dissolves in the water. The surroundings absorb the energy from the reaction, so it's clear that the water in the calorimeter is part of the surroundings. But the acid that we've added is also absorbing the energy from the reactions. So the surroundings include the water and the acid. Taking a look at the math, we'll start with our trusty first law of thermodynamics. Q system plus Q surroundings equals zero. Our system is the magical metaphysical concept of an exothermic or endothermic reaction. And the amount of heat released by a reaction can be determined by multiplying delta H of the reaction by moles of the reaction. The heat change of the surroundings will be calculated using Q equals M cap. The mass M will include both water and any added chemicals. We'll multiply the total mass by the specific heat and by the change in temperature. One last thing to watch out for is units. Enthalpy of reaction is usually given in units of kilojoules per mole, while specific heat is given in units of joules per gram Kelvin. Make sure that your units for each of the Q values, Q reaction and Q surroundings, make sure that those units are the same, either joules or kilojoules before adding them together. All right, that was a lot. But in practice, it works out to be just one or two big algebra problems. Let's see that for ourselves. Suppose a chemist drops five grams of hydrochloric acid into 100 milliliters of water and sees the temperature increase by 23.4 degrees Celsius. What is the delta H of this reaction? Pause the video and see how far you can get without my help. We'll start with the first law of thermo. Q reaction plus Q surroundings equals zero. Let's tackle Q surroundings first, since we can fill in all the variables. Q surroundings equals an MCAT equation for the solution inside the cup. So we'll multiply the total mass times the specific heat of water times the change in temperature. Remember, the total mass is 100 grams of water plus 5 grams of HCl. Solving for this, I get 10,280 joules. I'll plug that into the top equation and solve for Q reaction, which will be exactly opposite to Q surroundings. We're almost there. The number we have is the energy when 5 grams of HCl reacts. But the delta H of a reaction is the energy when 1 mole 
of HCl reacts. So to get delta H, I need to take the total energy of this reaction and divide it by the total moles of this reaction. My next step is to turn five grams of HCl into moles of HCl using the molar mass. Finally, we can plug it all in and get our answer negative 74,941 joules per mole. Delta H is typically given in kilojoules, so I'll convert one more time and round to the right number of sig figs. Lastly, I want to check my answer. Does it make sense that this reaction enthalpy is negative? Well, yes, it does. Negative enthalpy means exothermic, and this reaction was clearly exothermic since it increased the temperature of the water. Well, calorimetry can be dense stuff, and this last problem seemed like a lot to combine into one uh, section of the textbook, and it was. But each calorimetry problem boils down to some basic algebra where you have to solve for one unknown variable. For example, Here's the single algebra equation at the heart of the last problem. Even though it took us two slides to solve, it's just one equation that even a math 100 student could solve if given enough time. The difficult part is interpreting the problem to know what variables to fill into the equation. You can only get better at this with practice. Now, I'd like to summarize what we've learned so far in this chapter. The energy of the universe is a constant. If something gains energy, something else had to have lost the exact amount of energy. Chemicals earn and spend energy in the form of heat. Chemical potential energy is stored energy, and it's every chemical's dream to go on a spending spree and release that energy as heat. The reaction enthalpy, delta H of reaction, is the heat cost of one mole of reaction. It depends on how the reaction equation is written, so pay attention to the recipe written in the equation. Exothermic reactions have a negative delta H because their reactants contain lots of stored potential energy just dying to break free. Endothermic reactions are the opposite and have a positive delta H. I suggest using this fact to check your answers, since it's usually obvious whether a reaction is exothermic or endothermic. Getting a bit metaphysical, there are three places we see energy in this chapter. Sometimes energy is stored as chemical potential energy, which can be released during a reaction. Other times, a system at a certain temperature exchange heat with the surroundings at a different temperature, which changes the temperature of both. Thermal equilibration problems deal with heat flow from one object to another and use the math in this blue box. Reaction enthalpy problems deal with the conversion of chemical potential energy into heat and use the math in the red box. Last piece of advice. It's common to see an exam question such as this, where some reaction occurs and there's a temperature change. Now, when you get a multiple choice problem like this, you can cross off all the solutions that don't match the exothermic or endothermic nature of the original change. For instance, in this question, it says the temperature increases during this reaction. Temperature increase during a reaction, that means exothermic, and exothermic means negative delta H. So I cross off all the positive delta H's because those would describe an endothermic reaction. Now this doesn't get you all the way to the answer, but it will improve your odds of guessing by 50%.